Welcome to Box Recaps. Today I'm going to explain the movie Jane, released in the year 2022. The movie starts and we see a girl named Jane standing on the edge of a cliff, about to jump off, as she has decided that it is time for her to end things. The scene then changes to a few days later, where we see another young girl named Olivia, who used to be friends with Jane, and she's now trying to deal with the loss of a beloved friend. Olivia herself happens to be a very active and an ambitious girl who herself has tried her best not to let Jane's death come in the way of her daily routine and her ambitions. We see her working out every morning, helping a schoolmate named Josa with her charity, she still captains the debate society at her school, and she's still trying to do her best to get admission into Stanford. She's been trying to put up a strong front, but having so much on her plate and on top of that, the grief of her dear friend's death has started to get her gradually. We then see another girl named Izzy, who used to be best friends with both Jane and Olivia, but even months before Jane died, Izzy and Olivia have not been talking either, because Izzy decided to keep a distance from both Jane and Olivia, and the two have not talked since then. Olivia has to go through the death of Jane on her own. Olivia, however, still keeps trying to be strong at her school, because she does not want anyone to see her weak side. The students are seen whispering that she might have lost her touch a little after Jane's death, but Olivia does not care about these whispers, and keeps doing what she is up to. The scene changes, and we see Olivia talking to the school counselor named Billings. She goes on to ask her why Stanford only chooses two students every year from her school and not more. Billings, however, goes on to tell Olivia to stop being so obsessed with the Stanford thing. We learn that she's always talking about Stanford, and does not want to go to any other university. Olivia, however, thinks that she has no choice but to be extremely prudent about it because she does not want to lose her chances. There is a debating championship, and Olivia, along with her team, are in the first position, and the whole school is proud. Mr. Richardson is really proud of them, and goes on to introduce Olivia to a girl named Camille. Camille is a newcomer, and she will be joining the debating club as well. Olivia goes on to welcome her with open arms, despite the fact that she does not really feel like it. She, however, does it for the sake of the club. That night, we see her sending her application to Stanford, and the girl is so obsessed that she keeps refreshing her website. She then decides to sleep, but the sleep, of course, eludes her, so she goes on to check out Camille on social media. She sees that the girl has gotten a lot of nice comments from the other friends and starts feeling jealous of Camille. She makes her way to school the next day, and the only thing she has on her mind is her application to Stanford. She finally checks the website on her phone, only to learn that they have deferred her application for now. This deeply upsets her. Olivia is broken. She starts getting so overwhelmed from the emotional baggage that she's been carrying, she even hallucinates Jane standing in front of her. It gets too much for her, and the next thing we see, she's throwing up in the bathroom stalls. Camille is in the bathroom too, but she does not say anything. Olivia then goes to see the counselor, Billings, again. This time, she's not able to contain her tears. Billings tell Olivia that the world does not end there. There is still a lot she can do with her life. She also mentions that Olivia could also appeal personally to Stanford's administration board. Now that she knows that there is still a possibility for her to get into Stanford, she ends the conversation with Billings and leaves. Olivia then makes her way to the debating club, where Camille is already there having a chat with Richardson. Olivia does not like it because she's used to being the first one to get to the debating club. While Olivia already does not like Camille, Richardson goes on to make it worse when he tells Olivia that she's going to pair up with Camille to do practice. As they start practicing, Olivia starts getting extremely angry and jealous of Camille. When Camille goes on to point out some mistakes in her speech, Olivia, despite knowing that Camille is right, still keeps getting annoyed, even when she knows that Camille is just trying to be nice. She does not like the fact that Camille has experience going to the Nationals, and she herself does not have any such experience. Camille thinks that the team should benefit from her leadership skills too. This is all Olivia can take, because she has always been the leader, and thinking about someone else taking her place as the leader of the debating club just triggers her very badly. The next thing we know, Olivia has an anxiety attack and passes out right there. All the students, along with Richardson, gather around her, and when she finally opens her eyes, she again sees Jane standing among them. She is then told by Richardson that he knows she has not been doing well, so he's going to make her skip the next tournament. 
This is something which does not sit well with Olivia, but she has no other choice. Olivia then gets to the parking lot, and as she sits in her car, she's extremely frustrated and lets her anger out by screaming her lungs out. Izzy sees her, she finally approaches her and goes on to offer her a ride home. When they get to her place, Olivia is about to get out of the car, after thanking Izzy for the ride. But Izzy does not let her leave. She hugs her and finally admits that she too misses Jane. Olivia still cannot get over the fact that Camille is gradually taking up her place in the debating society. The next day, she hears Camille saying that she will be taking Olivia's place as the captain for this weekend's tournament. Olivia now starts thinking that she is too messed to function normally, so Richardson is going to make Camille the permanent captain of the team. She stands in front of a mirror in the hallway when she starts getting really anxious yet again. She sees Jane standing behind her in the mirror, but when she turns around, it is Izzy who is there to ask her if she needs a ride home. Olivia tells her that she will be fine, but she does ask Izzy to have a cup of coffee with her. Izzy agrees. The two finally get to chat after a long time, and Izzy gets to know about Camille and how she's been getting on Olivia's nerves. Olivia tells her that she's sick of the girl, and Izzy does a background check on Camille right away. The girls go on to learn that Camille is the girl who made her teacher look like he was harassing her, and after that, she was transferred to their school. The girl gets a copy of the court order, and starts messaging Camille through Jane's social media account. They send her the screenshot of the court order. After a while, Camille is called into the principal's office, and after a while, when Olivia and Izzy try to message her, they see that her social media account has been removed. She later learns that Camille has been transferred to another school, and this puts Olivia in a good mood, because she's back at being the leader of the debating society again. Her mood is, however, killed when Miss West tells the class that their tests were really disappointing. The next day, Izzy and Olivia decide to teach West a lesson, as Izzy hacks her phone the next day, and when she attaches her phone to the big screen in the classroom for the lecture, Izzy puts up silly pictures of West and captions them, saying her lie is so sad. West is pissed, while the whole class has a good laugh about it. West goes mad and starts checking everyone's computer to find the prankster. Olivia records the whole thing. She records the incident when West hits a student accidentally. They post the video through Jane's social media account, and it goes viral right away. The next day, West is fired, and Izzy and Olivia notice that Jane's account has gotten many followers. They start using her account to expose different things at school and even cyberbully the students they don't like. Izzy and Olivia then notice a post on Jane's account, which both of them did not post. They do not think much of it. The next day, Olivia sees Izzy hanging up a Stanford flag because she's been selected. Olivia congratulates her. Izzy feels bad that Olivia did not get in, and when she leaves, Olivia starts crying. This is when Jane appears and puts the flag down while Olivia puts it back up. Olivia and Izzy go to a party being held by Izzy's ex, but when they get there, they see that her ex has already moved on and he's flirting with Joza. Izzy tells Olivia that she is sick of Joza, as she's always flirting with taken boys. She also reveals that Joza has an addiction problem too. Olivia and Izzy then go on to drug Joza's juice, and the girl goes crazy. She starts dancing with all the boys, much to Izzy and Olivia's amusement. Izzy then tells Olivia that this is the happiest she's been in a long time. Izzy also apologizes to Olivia for avoiding her and Jane before Jane passed away. This is when Joza gets too drunk and passes out. Olivia and Izzy check in on her, and this is when Olivia sees Jane recording the whole moment where Joza passes out. After a while, both Izzy and Olivia receive a lot of notifications on their phone, and it turns out the video of Joza passing out has been uploaded on Jane's account. The girls swear to each other that they did not post the video. They go on to say that they did not even record this video. Olivia and Izzy then go on to delete Jane's account, saying they have had enough fun with this. Olivia then makes her way back home. Her parents ask her where she's been, but she just ignores them and goes on to tell them that she does not feel like talking. In her room, as she lies down, she sees Jane sitting on her monitor. The two girls meet at school the next morning, and both of them are shocked when they see that someone has reactivated Jane's Connect account. They also learn that Joe's drink was not drugged and that she's the one who did it to herself. Olivia and Izzy, on the other hand, try to delete the social media account of Jane again, but the account keeps coming back. Izzy says that it must be a glitch, 
so she tells Olivia to just ignore it. She tells her that they should come up with a proper story about the last night. The principal Rhodes then goes on to call Olivia to her office. Olivia tells her that she saw nothing strange at that party, adding that she has not used Jane's account either. She adds that she has not even seen her account ever since she died. Olivia again sees Jane standing behind Rhodes. We then see Rhodes making a phone call to an expert. She tells them to get the IP addresses of the phones on which Jane's account is being used, and Olivia hears this conversation. Olivia gets anxious, and when she runs outside, she sees every person as Jane, and then just passes out. Olivia tells Izzy about the IP incident, and Izzy tells her that they should just come clean. Olivia, however, goes on to say that if she comes clean, she's going to lose her chances to get to Stanford for good. She later learns that her parents use VPN. Both their parents use VPN, so they are now sure that they're not going to get caught. Later, Olivia goes to a coffee shop where she runs into Camille, who apologizes to her for her behavior when she was in the debating club. She says that she was not doing well mentally because she was harassed by her teacher. She says that the faculty at her previous school covered up for their colleague and they made it look like it was her fault. Olivia feels guilty for what she did to Camille, and now she breaks down in the bathroom where she keeps seeing Jane in the mirror and even breaks it. The next day, when she's at school, she learns that Josa has also gotten into Stanford. She is now extremely jealous of the other girls and decides to rat out Izzy. She tries to write an email telling Rhodes that Izzy is behind Jane's account, but cannot bring herself to do it. Izzy notices that all the posts from Jane's account have been deleted. She thinks that Olivia is planning to rat her out and calls Olivia, telling her that she's going to call Principal Rhodes first. Olivia quickly drives up to her place and begs her not to confess to Rhodes. She does not listen, and just as she is about to call Rhodes, Olivia jumps on her, and her phone drops while both the girls land in the pool nearby. Izzy ends up drowning because Olivia does not let her get out of the pool so that she is not able to get to her phone. She then puts two bricks in her pocket so that her body remains underwater. She makes it look like Izzy has done it to herself. She then turns on Izzy's computer, makes a post from Izzy's account where she writes a post in which she makes it look like Izzy is confessing that she is the one who has been using Jane's account, and all the things that she has posted have been making her feel guilty of what she did. So she is now going to end her life. Olivia makes her way to the debating club as they have to take part in a tournament. The competition takes place and Olivia absolutely nails it. Her team gets a place in a tournament at the national level. The death of Izzy's news spreads. Olivia is to talk to the police, who believe her story, and she later ends up getting admission into Stanford, where she has told them that she wants to study mental health and help the people like her two dead friends. We then see her giving a speech in another competition, and she sees Jane in the crowd who smiles at her, making it seem like she is proud of Olivia. And with that, the movie comes to an end. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on the notification and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.